on Treasure Island today with Mr. Dennis Wallace. Dennis, I want to thank you for coming out and chatting with us for a few minutes. My uh, pleasure. I want to take a little time and uh, ask you, a lot of people over here follow you and uh, admire you and your music and have for a long time. Um, there's probably things that these people would like to know, things that I would like to know that you've never heard about. So I'd just like to ask you, what were your influences early on? When did you decide that music was what you wanted to do? Well, I guess early on I've come from a musical family and, uh, you know, grew up singing in church. You know, my folks, you know, we always sang around the piano. My sister Linda, you know, played the piano and also, you know, my other sisters too. And we always sang in church, you know, and sang at home, you know, mostly gospel music. But uh, so that was the main musical influence that was always around. And uh, some of my early influences as far as music is, you know, I like that mostly listen to the country music. So Flat and Scruggs, like them, all the old country uh, shows out of uh, Nashville, you know, Porter Wagner, Wilburn Brothers. And probably my biggest influence in guitar was Chet Atkins. You know, I just, I was amazed by him. And, uh, and oddly enough, Earl Scruggs on guitar, the, the gospel songs that they would do and he would finger pick, you know, and he, that's I still use Earl Scruggs licks from the guitar to this day. But that that's the early stuff. And as far as wanting to be a musician, I had no dreams of that until I moved down here. You know, so that was the, you know, I mean, I played some up in in my hometown, but uh, that was pretty much I never had a chance to. You know, there's no way of making a living up there as far as music. You know, unless you went to Nashville, and I wasn't about to do that. So. Well. I'm sure Nashville had plenty of room for you. Well, yeah, you know, that, I could have gone there and washed dishes for a while and, <laughs> and then uh, gone home with my tail tucked between my legs. But <laughs> um, What were your, your, what gave you the idea you wanted to play music? Uh, what made you interested in the guitar? Well, like I said, those watching those people and I always wanted to play guitar. And my brother-in-law, Eugene Leftwich, who's married to my sister, Geraldine, he had a guitar. And I remember going up, you know, and spending the night at their house. And he'd break out the guitar, you know, and sit around, you know, prop his foot up on a, on a chair, you know, and sit there and play music. And I just thought that was the grandest thing ever. You know, I mean, just, you know, the way the guitar looked, the way it smelled, the way it sounded, you know, it was just all real cool stuff. So probably Eugene and then other, I had other relatives that played guitar and stuff. You know, we never had a guitar around the house, it was always a piano. But then Dad, you know, I begged him enough that he got me a guitar when I was 12. So. And that guitar that I, I just inherited that guitar that my brother-in-law had, it was the first guitar I ever saw. And he passed away this past, last fall. And my sister gave me that guitar. It's a, 51 uh, triple out 18 mark wow yeah very very cool guitar that's so, quite a treasure try to quite a treasure yeah i'm very happy to have that it's a it's a beautiful beautiful guitar beautiful sounding guitar so and that was your first recollection of of a guitar that's actually. the first guitar i probably ever saw i'm guessing you know, how old were you gosh he bought that in 52 and i wasn't born in 54 so i don't remember the first time i saw it it was just always there, you know. I mean, that was the thing. And other relatives, my, my cousin Luke left, which he had had a Gibson guitar and, and uh, you know, mandolin and stuff like that. So we'd go over to their house and they'd have square dances, you know. And so <laughs> I was always around that stuff. Old time square dances. Mm -hmm. I kind of grew up with that myself, and uh, that was an early influence for me. Tell me a, a little about, since you've moved to Florida and you came to the West Coast, what, um, tell me about your gigs and, and how it kind of began for you here. Well, I started out just playing uh, small clubs and stuff. You know, I really didn't have a lot. I, I formed a bluegrass band when I was down here and that we first started working downtown, a place called the Garden Restaurant, in downtown St. Pete. And uh, 
not much money in it, but you know, it was a gig. And we did that for, uh, I guess we did that for three or four years. We played a lot of places over in Tampa around University of South Florida. That was, uh, you know, we Skipper Smokehouse, places like that. There were little pubs around there that we used to play. And so that was uh, that was pretty good. And that, you know, once I started doing that, the, I was smitten with, you know, playing. So I just kind of had to do it from there. And so that was good. You know, I, I was still having to work a day job because there just wasn't enough of it and it didn't pay enough. But then one day a buddy of mine says, you know, you ought to go over to Tampa. You know, there's the country bars over there and you can probably play some music. So I went over there and I was totally amazed. That was after the urban cowboy craze. So there was still a lot of country music and, and bars with big dance floors. And, the, you know, they play had music, you know, six and seven nights a week. So I had this band called String Fever, and we started playing, and uh, that took off. And then I was working, you know, five or six nights a week, and then I quit my day job. <laughs> that had to have felt good. Yeah, it uh, felt real good. I don't like working that much. You no, know you're going to be supported off your music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was all good. You know, I had fun with that. and Had that band for 10 years. But I was living over here driving to Tampa a lot and got really tired of that and, uh, and I thought well you know I think I can do a single act over here so I, I quit that band decided to do a single act and I got a job at Ricky T's and I also had a little gig at a place called Barnacle Bills on St. Pete Beach at the Howard Johnson's so I built off of those two and I said well you know I'm never going to play electric guitar be in a band again that all changed <laughs> so it's next thing you know there's people coming in to set in and next thing you know I didn't plan any of this but next thing you know I had a band a couple of bands and uh, it just took off from there you know playing Ricky T's on the weekends shark attack You've seen that band and then uh then Kevin Holloway and I started doing a little duo there and that turned into corn fused down the road and uh, you know, it just grew from the duo, or from the single to the duo to a trio to a quartet, and then sometimes five and six people. You know, it depends on who's down here from up north. So you never know what's going to happen because I don't know. <laughs> How long? Um, I've noticed. I mean, I've been in the area for quite some time, and I've noticed that you have played at, at Ricky T's. Well, as long as I've known you which has been 12, 14 years now, um, and you were going strong then. How, how long have you had that gig? It's hard for me. I know it's been over 20 years. I think it's like 21 years. I started there after Ricky opened the place. Uh, he'd been open like a year. And uh, I got in there on a Tuesday night, and then, you know, Ricky at the time was alive, and he said, well, let's see how Tuesday nights go. <laughs> And I've been there ever since. So, you know, for over one 20 time, years. Over 20 years, yeah, at least 20 and maybe 21. So. There's very few people ever had a gig that, that last over 20 years. I mean, you, is it your following? You've got, you've got, well, it seems you have a great following that, that keeps you going. I do. I've been lucky enough to make a lot of friends there through that place. And, uh, you know, and they just, come back to see me play and it's just worked out really well I mean it's not unusual Kevin Toon has been there in 22 years <laughs> so it's like you know he's got me beat but uh but only slightly so uh, but yeah it's just the people Treasure Island mainly uh just the people are really nice here and they're very loyal and I've been lucky to to land on Treasure Island that's what it boils down to I don't know if I could have done it anywhere else or not you know so it's all been good all been great well, then tell me, and I'm sure every, every artist has some kind of story about the worst gig that you've ever played and something that happened. Well, I've been lucky enough to work for good people. Uh, I've only had to deal with a couple of mean bar owners, you know, in, in the whole time. And, uh, but I don't stick around long if they're mean. So, <laughs> but uh, there's 
One of the worst ones I had is right before I quit the country band. It, they were getting farther and farther away. And I won't mention the name of the bar, but it was east of Tampa, you know, quite a ways. And I was getting tired of going all the way over there. Plus, it was five sets, and you had to play till three in the morning. And it was a rough bar. I never worried about anybody hurting me. But I was always afraid I'd get caught in a crossfire <laughs> in the place, you know. So, <laughs> so that's what it boiled down to. And I, you know, like I said, I'd been tired of living on Treasure Island and driving to East Tampa, and uh, you know, staying until three o'clock in the morning, not getting home till four, and I just really got burned out. And that's the reason. Yeah, that was my worst gigs right there, and that made me come over to see. You know, I can be five minutes away from my house now, and you know, I can walk to my gigs if I go set up the stuff. So that's. That's what I strive for, is uh, the least amount of effort <laughs> or the most amount of payback. <laughs> well, it seems it's paid off pretty well for you. I can't complain. I remember when, when I first met you, you had the Thursday night and the Friday night gig out in front of uh, Ricky T's there at the beach. But on Friday night, after you finished playing your, your bluegrass set with Corn Fused, you would go inside and play rock and roll band, mm -hmm. Shark Attack, and you did this Friday night, and then you'd come in on Saturday night and do the same thing, and uh, recall it being pretty late at night when you come out of there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, how did that go for you? What? That's That was a really great band. It was a great band and nothing but fun. Uh, we played there for years, and uh, you know, with Rob Tyre, Bongo Berry, my son Aaron, and uh, later on, Kirk Adams, who you filmed last night. And uh, but yeah, just a pleasure to play with those guys. But it just got to the point where I got old enough. I didn't want to be in a bar at 1:30 in the morning anymore. So it's like, I said, you know, once again, change the lifestyle a little bit, so I don't have to be out late. You know, all my gigs are over at 10, 10:30 at the latest anymore. So yeah, once again, make it as easy on myself as possible. That's been my goal. <laughs> Well, it seems you've fulfilled your goal, uh, <laughs> what you were you were striving for. It's all come to you. Yep. And all the money too. You know, I made so much money at it, and that's that's been. <laughs> well, it's all it's all about the money. Of course. Uh, when you're a musician, you know, it's got to be the money. It's not because you love music. Yeah, it's, you know. Plus, I have a huge clothes habit. You know. <laughs> well, we've seen that in you over time. Black t-shirt, you know, that's a uh, custom uniform there. Yeah, classic. <laughs> well, Dennis, thank you so much for taking time to hang out with us, which you've, we've hung out together for many, years. For many, many years now. Uh, playing, you know, you've come to my play, house and played. I've been to your house and played. We, we've played out together and had lots of fun with it. I think you have been a big influence on me well, and good. what I play and how I play and I I learned a lot from you and and back at you you've, you've turned me on to so much good music you know that a lot of songs that I play to this day you know that I wouldn't have known about if it hadn't been for you so that it works both ways well, so <laughs> I'm here to help I know it don't seem like it but uh, <laughs> thank you very much for coming out with us today uh, this has been Video Shoot with Dennis Wallace. I am Americana.com. We are Americana.com. Well, we are. <laughs> you can find us on IamAmericana.com. There's a link there that you can hit the like button, go over and follow us on Facebook. We put up videos and schedules of these wonderful and talented musicians. And there's lots of them over here on the Treasure Treasure Island, St. Pete Beach area. The music scene here is unbelievable. And it's because of people like this man right here. So you have him to thank. 